Did you know that the Amarna civilization produced beer like we do today? Its production reflected the role of social norms in the society. It is odd, because we know that beer was a large part of the Amarna life, but little evidence of how it was made exists. How did they brew it, we might ask? We have some idea. Amarna in Middle Egypt and Dara and Medina in the south offer key sites in the recovery of preserved remains of cereal-based foods and liquids. Residues remain on broken pottery. We can see barley, wheat, and other popular cereals through scanning electron microscopy. Archaeology is cool, which is why we need more analysis on how each ingredient was prepared and used. If it really is related to social stratification, then we want to know how alcohol separated the masses from the elites. Well, did you know that fruits were also integral to Amarna? Let me tell you how. The Amarna people placed a huge emphasis on growing fruits rather than grain, which is strange because of the mass amounts of beer they brewed, and also because excavation has revealed that wheat was the main source of food. The emphasis on fruit may have been due to the high locust and insect pest presence in the farming areas. Because they grew so much fruit, though, we can assume that they were highly advanced in irrigation and water level management. This suggests that they were able to sustain agricultural lifestyles during floods and also efficiently transport water, being that they were so close to the Nile River. In Amarna, although there was fruit, there was also a lot of meat, so carnivores can rejoice. Pigs, goats, cattle, and even the striped hyena have been found in excavations of Amarna. We do not know if Amarna people ate, revered, or domesticated the striped hyena. The hyena may have indicated social stratification here, but because there are so many variations of cave paintings depicting hyenas, we do not know for sure its importance. In some of these paintings, hyenas are being force-fed, which suggests domestication, but research has shown that domestication by force-feeding is not necessary. Interestingly, trichinella, which is a larvae, has been found in Amarna mummies, which is both in hyenas and pigs. Did workmen or elites eat hyena, or did they not? Were elites only allowed to eat hyena? This may be true, for pig jaws and pig sties have been discovered in all workmen villages which were lower class, suggesting that these lower classes only could eat pig. And I mean, if being poor meant eating bacon, then sign me up for the workmen's village. Striped hyenas are cool and all, but let's be real. Bread is the best thing here. Actually, a lot of work went into bread. It was used as both a bartering object and also sustenance. Most houses required mortar tools and kerns. The workmen's villages were self-sufficient and produced their own bread. Because of this, we can assume that the village was very independent. No one cooperated much, which fostered a competitive atmosphere within the village. The workmen, the king, the administration were heavily affected by bread. Egyptian text was sometimes inscribed into meat containers, which usually described the type of grain. The texts were not always easily decipherable though. We know that Amarna society was based on massive scale production, but because the whole state was wealthy, individuals were able to do more if they wanted. It's important to compare written records with artifact discovery, as it leads to in-depth analysis. The more you know! Amarna. 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 Up in here. <laughs>